Well, hello, everybody. This is uh, Dean Penny. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. I have uh, made a commitment to get through the explication. So, you know, uh, my style uh, is more long form, more narrative form, but uh, I'm chunking this thing up as we move through the explication. So the next part of the explication is type of a client or customers. Please know there's only two questions here in uh, this part of uh, what you're held accountable for. So uh, one of the important concepts that we keep uh, hammering is this idea of a natural person. Now that's important not only in this discussion, but on your exam as a whole. The natural persons are living, breathing human beings walking planet Earth. And, you know, unnatural persons are not living human beings uh, walking planet Earth. And what we mean by that is a natural person would be an individual who you may have as a client or a customer, an investment advisory client or customer, a sole proprietorship. You know, the business entities are unnatural persons, whether it's uh, from an earlier part of the exam or coming part of the exam, broker dealers, investment advisors, issuers that are all unnatural persons. And unnatural persons can also be uh, clients as well. Now, remember what's important about uh, natural persons in terms of legality is that means you're not going to have accounts for minors directly because it would be considered legally to be, you know, uh, uh, persons, you know, natural persons that engage in that. Uh, two questions here. And I think the best way to attack these two questions, particularly this next section here, would be with an answer set that I think you should be aware of. And I call these very important answer sets. You know, I've been thinking about at some point just writing a whole practice final, perhaps, with very important, important answer sets. Uh, because the answer set is such that you want to be able to perform regardless of what they give you. I don't know why I doing that. Uh, as you see here, we have a general partnership. And we have, uh, let's call this B. We have A, B, C, D on the test. We have uh, LLCs. Uh, let's call this uh, C as an answer set, subchapter S. And let's put our D choice as a C Corp. Uh, our D choice C Corp. And I, I know on the test, we certainly don't have uh, you know, five choices, but that's what that would look like. So on your exam, you're certainly going to get an answer set that says A, general partnership, B, LLC, C, subchapter S, D, C, corp. Uh, depending on what the question was, will depend on the answer. You know, if they say all the following have the flow through of the tax consequences, except. If they say all the following have the flow through of the tax consequences, except, that would be the C corp. Remember, the C corp makes money, pays taxes. If it has a loss, it's trapped within the corporate shell. And so that C Corp, if that's your customer, it's not going to have that flow through. You know, we're talking about these business entities as potential customers, but these are what we call forms of business ownership. So, you know, the easiest test question, the easiest uh, form of business ownership to form and dissolve is the sole proprietorship. That too is testable. Uh, we also have general partnerships. So C Corp is stuck within that uh, corporate shell. Now, the general partnership, the general partners have unlimited liability. And uh, partnerships, that's going to flow through the profits or losses uh, to the partners. And that means the money is the tax consequences are realized once. There's a flow through again. Now, one of the questions you could ask is, you know, uh, a couple, for example, husband and wife have a general partnership uh, as a business together. They both have unlimited liability. They won't say that part. They'll just say general partnership. Uh, everything uh, seems to be okay. They're making the money and they want to dissolve. Why would they consider dissolving the general partnership and uh, forming an LLC? And the answer would be because the LLC doesn't have unlimited liability. Even if it's a sole member LLC, limited liability companies, that's what LLC stands for, do not have unlimited liabilities. So that would be the reason you might consider doing that. Uh, let me say that again. One reason you might consider dissolving a general partnership and uh, going into an LLC format is, again, because general partners have unlimited liability. Managing members of an LLC do not. Now, subchapter S is testable as well. Uh, subchapter S is going to have a flow through as well. 
subchapter S, losses and profits flow through. And uh, on the subchapter S, you can only have a max uh, test, testable content, 100 shareholders, and none of those put that there. I'm missing, no one messing my answer set. Subchapter S, max 100 shareholders, and none of those can be uh, non resident. So non, no, non resident. Uh, shareholders. So two questions in this exam uh, on your uh, exam. So uh, again, I think just be prepared for answer sets is the way I would think that this is a, a test taker. I'm going to get an answer set. I need to be able to deal with that answer set. All right. So uh, why would we set up a trust? Now, if I'm going to have a trust as a customer, I need a copy of the trust agreement. That's important. Let's put that there. If we're opening the account for trust, we need a copy of the trust agreement to make sure that, you know, whatever they want to do, for example, like margin or options is specific, specifically permitted within the terms of that trust. But the uh, main reason people set up a trust is to avoid probate. Probate is a legal process where we go through when somebody dies, you know, to allocate assets and do all that stuff. And it's a, you know, it's a legal mess. So. Uh, if there's ways to avoid probate, uh, customers may be interested in doing so, and trusts are used to do that. It's part of the estate planning toolbox. toolbox. That's why we say trust and estates. So there's a couple of different versions of this trust. I wouldn't get in the weeds here. A, a lot of the vendors you know, go into you know, two, three pages on complex trusts and simple trusts and grantors and settlers and you know, life insurance trusts. And again, I'll just point to the top of the page where we have two questions here. Uh, I think your time is better spent elsewhere, but you know, that's for you to make that editorial decision. So we said that the reason we do it is estate planning, that could be testable, avoid probate, that could be testable. And uh, the two basic contrasting points are a revocable trust, also known as living trust. You're going to avoid probate, but you're still going to be subject to estate taxes. It's part of the estate that's subject to state taxes. But you control those assets while you're alive. It doesn't become irrevocable until you die. And so that would be an advantage to that is you're actually retaining control of the assets. And you can change your mind. That hints the term revoke. Irrevocable trust, that too avoids probate. That's the point of a trust. It's not part of your state. So if you'll give up the control and set up the irrevocable trust, it's not going to be part of your state. And the trust isn't going to be liable for any income received, any income received by the trust. So, you know. Uh, that would be the advantage. Now, the trust may distribute, you know, the corpus. The corpus is the Latin term for the body of the, uh, you know, trust in this case, the principal value, so to speak. Anyways, uh, not liable. There may be distributions that would be liable to the people who are receiving them, but in terms of the trust itself, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, foundations and charities. Foundations and charities. So in the foundations and charities, foundations is another word for charities. There's minute differences, but for test taking, there's no difference between the Gates Foundation and, uh, you know, a charity. You know, they're, they're, they're the same things in terms of uh, test content. So in this area, we have two uh, types of trust. We have a charitable lead trust, and that gives uh, certain benefits to the charity, but the, or foundation. And then the remainder would go to my beneficiaries. And we also have a charitable remainder trust, where in that trust, I would get the income from the trust for a defined period of time. And then the remainder would go to the charity or the foundation. All right, well, that's two questions. We're working our way through the explication. As you can see, our next one is going to be a little target rich. Now, I'm changing my uh, modus operandi, my MO here. And rather than, you know, doing these things an hour to pop, I think it's going to be easier for me and maybe for you to digest. If I am uh, moving forward, I think I'm going to do one of these at a time. What I mean by that is, the next one would be the six questions on client customer profile, rather than what I've been doing, which is just rolling until I get tired or I exhaust, you know, 10 or 12 questions. So that'll be uh, what we'll be doing next. All right. Well, uh, like, uh, share, subscribe. Uh, the channel's coming up on its one year anniversary. Um, you know, I would like to get more NASA content, more NASA test takers. So, you know, if you know people that are taking NASA exams, our channel is uh, so far, we're coming up on 200,000 views and 3,000 subscribers. About over our channels, about over half the channel is Series 7 people using it. Uh, about a quarter is SIE and 
about 20% is uh, NASA. And I'd like to get that NASA component up. So your help is greatly appreciated. Uh, if you have any questions about these installments on the explication, just uh, feel free to put in the comment box and I respond very quickly.